Well, one of our new events now, and again, if this is anything like the Diamond Jubilee in 10 years' time, we'll be looking back saying what a great year it was for junior women's eights. Uh, we've got Lady Eleanor Hollies on the right-hand side of your picture on the Buck Station and Shrewsbury School on the left-hand side of your picture on the Berkshire Station. And Catherine, it is delightful, you know, to see these crews in this event as somebody who uh, you learned to row in an eight right um at edinburgh great to see people who are picking up the sport in these junior women's events racing here at the regatta yeah i learned to row in an eight in um, at university level so to see these girls even much younger than even i first ever picked up an hour and they're, they're ju they just look the part don't they? they're so well drilled so well timed they've got again you know two incredibly good schools with, with incredibly great history in this sport and um, just coming here and, and, you know, blazing a trail for young women racing down this Henley course, but looking as if they've never been anywhere else. They absolutely belong. They look totally in place. Uh, yeah, I was thinking this when I was watching the regatta earlier on in the week. They came past me, these the first round of these junior women's eights, and I just thought they looked so at home. Why have we not had this before? It's amazing. And uh, Lady Ellen Hollies are currently three seats up on Shrewsbury School, who uh, again had a really dominant performance in their race um, earlier in the week. And uh, yeah, holding the National Schools champions to, uh, to only a three-seat lead. Yeah, looking forward to this. Lady Eleanor Hollis came out fast and really kind of jumped out at the start and got a nice, comfortable lead. You know, there, there was always that feeling they were going to see them just move away constantly, but actually, fair play to Shrewsbury. They have not let them slip away, and if anything, are pulling back on them slightly. Yeah, they, I think they are pulling back. If you look at the bow ball of the yellow boats, that little bit on the white bit on the end, um, if you look at where that's lining up with the crew on the near side, it is creeping back. If you're tuning into rowing for the first time, you can see that the crew on the right is gaining, Shrewsbury's gaining on Lady Eleanor Hollis. And again, going back to that, you know, going inside their minds, that mental side. If you have got a crew that's jumped on you in the start, that's moved away from you, when you start to pull it back in, you that that's when you start to feel this is working now look the crews are coming a little bit close together which is uh, again dramatic to watch not comfortable for any of the coaches watching on there but they haven't been warned yet but they've moved away again yeah rich phelps with flag in hand ready again and uh, he's been kept busy this morning but uh yeah the shrewsbury school cox i'm sure driving them to to eat away that deficit natalia toms um in the the driving seat with the the steering cables and the microphone to tell her crew what to do um will be pushing them on to to try and claw back um the lead that lady Ellen Hoss has gained but um a really interesting in fact about Natalia actually her brother is coxing the Shrewsbury boys first date it's wonderful isn't it we often see siblings uh, as athletes in the boat you know rowing together competing together sculling together it's wonderful to see sibling coxes as well you know we don't see as many coxes as we used to there's less boats that are cox but to see two coxes from the same family both competing at Henley is brilliant now, this could be a real upset here, Catherine. And uh, Lady Eleanor Hollis, like we say, they were the national schools champions in this event. So they, that is the best title you can get as a schoolgirl rower in this event. They've, they've got that trophy. They're looking to come here to Henley Royal Regatta and win the inaugural event here. But Shrewsbury, who have really not been in this combination long, you know, this boat is comprised of their quad and their four that have come together very, very recently, are putting them under pressure. And I think, in fact, now leading. I, I mean, both crew, this is again a bit like we've just been discussing with the, the men's singles race we watched, was when it gets suddenly, you know, bow ball to bow ball, we talk about that almost every stroke could mean a different leader. We, you know, we don't always see it this close racing in the eights, and it's brilliant to see, once again, a little bit of warning for steering from Shrewsbury. What they need to make sure is that steering, the cox will need to adjust, that that doesn't bring any tension, any tightness, because often what happens is when the crew has to steer, then there's a little bit of tightness comes in, but it doesn't look like they're worrying about that right now. Yeah, and uh, the coxes that, you know, that don't try anything clever with the streams and trying to second guess where the best water is, dead straight line down the course, you know, that's what's going to keep these athletes calm, it's going to keep them ensuring that they know they're in safe hands and that they're not going to clash with the crew next time when the race is this tight, my word, what a race here in this new Junior Women's Eights event, the National Schools champions going up against, well, the, uh, the new crew from Shrewsbury School who's come up here to upset the apple cart it was three seats we're now down to one Catherine I know and if anyone was worried was concerned about why we bring this event into Hannibal Regatta then this is why we bring it in because we see some of the best young women in the country putting on the most dramatic display of racing and you know I think I think 
Legend Eleanor Hollis there has just responded. They're not going to want to be thrown out of their regatta on a Friday. They've come here to do much more damage, but Shrewsbury is making it incredibly tough for them and is going to push them, I would hope, all the way. Indeed, and they've got their, at Lady Ellen Hollies, they've got their incoming captain, uh, Miss Patani, in the stroke seat uh, to drive them down the course. And uh, she's setting the pace there, leading the rhythm. She's at the front of the boat. You can see her there looking towards us. And uh, as incoming captain, I'm sure, will be wanting to set a precedent for her year um, incoming. But uh, they're going to have to do something again, I think. Shrewsbury coming back, they're staying calm. This is very mature racing here. This really is, and, I, and again, a lot goes back to the cops keeping those cool heads. You know, when it feels like this, you are so close to your opposition, and, and every stroke is drawing level, then actually just keeping them very focused on the, the job they have to do. The cops will call them in, what tactics they want, what technique they want, and this is going to come into the enclosures, and it is going to be all to play for. Well, certainly going to be keeping the progress board busy as they come in towards the line because uh, the lead has uh, just about been with Lady Eleanor Hollis down this course, but Shrewsbury has done everything they can to try and snatch that away from them. And uh, as I look up the course, they're just approaching the mile and eight signal. And I think actually Shrewsbury just looking a little bit more relaxed here, Catherine. I don't, I, you know, I don't know. Lady Eleanor Hollis on paper, the stronger crew, perhaps the the more drilled crew. They've been together a lot longer, but Shrewsbury just looks so loose and long. They do certainly. The bodies of the Shrewsbury look really. Really now. I love the way they're going together. The blade work is getting a little bit ragged. Now let's not forget that the wind is picking up. It's a headwind and it means it's going to be a long, tiring race for both crews. They just need to keep it clean as they come in their ass, but you just see from shows be a little bit bouncing side to side on the water there. Yeah, I think LEH just holding their blades into the finish a little bit more, which is what we were saying yesterday, actually, when we had quite a big headwind. You've got to keep long, you've got to hold the blades in at the finish to um, not wash out into the headwind. And I think Shrewsbury just losing that a little bit as the pressure piles on because they know there's a space in the weekend on the line and they're starting to come through. This is exactly what we want from both crews. It's going to come down to that sprint finish. It's all to play for and the crowd is going ecstatic next to them. This is the kind of racing people love to come and see. Well, this has been one of the best races of this inaugural event. The Junior Women's Eights is going to come down to the line. I think the speed lies with Lady Eleanor Hollis, the national schools champions, looking to become the Junior Women's Eights champions. And uh, to stay in the regatta for the weekends means that they have the opportunity to do that race once again in the semi-finals.